Hello there! Welcome to Guitar Building with Glibus. Today we don't have much time, so let's get going. Uh, it is really, really getting progressively colder each day. So currently it's minus four or minus five, something about that. It's really cold, so I'm trying to finish up as many things as I can while it's still sunny and it's like the sunniest point of the day. So yeah, but anyway, we gotta keep going. We have to finish this guitar, no matter what. So let's get to doing things. First thing I would like to do today is to drill a hole that would connect our two pickup cavities. So this one here and this one here. And this is the hole for the uh, pickup cable to go through. So this is very important to do before we glue on our neck, because if you glue our neck, we have no more access to drilling this hole. Now is the perfect time to do it. So what I have here uh, is a card that basically protects the neck pocket from being damaged by a drill. I have a long drill set up in my drill. So yeah, I just have to make this hole. So I'll try to make it closer to the left side, because if you know the way pickups work, like the cable usually comes out on the left part, and I checked this for my pickups. I'm not showing this to you because I don't want to reveal my pickups just yet, but you know, you can check for your pickups and see where the cable is coming out. So for me, it's on this side right here. That's why I'm going to drill a hole straight through. So I'm just trying to make it as low as I can, while at the same time not damaging my neck pocket. So here looks like a perfect place. I'll start very carefully. Make sure I'm going parallel to everything so that I don't go deep. So staying straight. So, oh my god. So, while at it, or to be more precise, while we are drilling some holes, I thought it might be a good opportunity to drill some holes for our pots as well. So, what I have here is our pots. Uh, that's simple wiring. I'm going to disassemble all that because I'm going to have my custom wiring, but I'm going to use these pots. So, if I check their size, that is 7.8 or let's check here 7.6 7.7 millimeters you see that's right okay so now i'm going to take my set of drill bits and find a matching bit so something like seven millimeters or eight millimeters would be perfect this one is eight millimeters and if a hole is tiny bit bigger that's not an issue so let's check for that 7.8 millimeters that is you know in terms of pot holes that's pretty much spot on so let's use this one so we have our choice here i have marked the holes for my pots so this one here you probably don't see it but here and here i have holes for to my pots and here is my three-way selector switch which we will do in a moment so let me put this into my drill and then important tip that you'll find useful if you're familiar with this kind of center drill bits they can cause a lot of tear out on the other side when they're going through so for a good measure i'm going to take this sacrificial block of ash and i'm going to locate it at the back of the body in the place where you know my hole will be so i'll put it in there and then i'll carefully flip my guitar 
back down. And once again, make sure that it's where it should be. And then this setup, this should prevent the tear down from this drill bit. So now, you know, there is not much else to say. I'm just going to take this hole and then very carefully drill this. So it's like there is a bit of terror happening, but this is not an issue entirely. And so see at the back, because we had a sacrificial block, it's rather clean. So that is all good. Now let me repeat the same process again with this hole right here. Okay. Trying to stay very straight. And ash is a very soft wood, so it's very easy to drill it. Yeah, so as you see from here, uh, we have our hole from the sacrificial block. It looks like we missed it the first time, but still, and it's perfect at the back. So that was the most important part here. The hole for a three-way selector switch is essentially the same, but it's a little bit different. And yeah, so it's 11.6 millimeters. That is why I'm going to be using a 12 millimeter bit. But this drill bit, it's a very strange one. So if you see here, it's like a spiral, a small drill bit at the end, at the tip of it. And then like this kind of very wide drill bit. Did you see any drill bits like this before? Well, I didn't see them before, but now I've got them. And the strange thing about it is that you want to drill small pilot hole for this like tip which is five millimeters exactly so at the tip it is five millimeters or about so so that's why i'm going to drill in with this five millimeter first and then this one this location right here and we went all the way through so now that you have this pilot hole I'm removing my 5 millimeters and I'm taking this 12 millimeter. I'm not even sure what is the name of this drill, but I'm taking this one here and yeah, just very carefully putting it in place. Like I went through so let me just back down yes I did go through yep so we can now move this away the sacrificial blocks so this is the evidence that it worked right here and we have our perfect hole for a three-way selector switch now, I would be wrong here if I didn't check that it's actually true and it sits in perfectly and same for the pots, yep, goes in exactly the right way. So yeah, awesome, you're right here. And one last hole for today is a hole for our jack, it's going to be here. Now this is not a random location. Uh, if you maybe look carefully like that, I actually marked this location so that it's in, it is in a spot when you can sit with guitar and, you know, play curve, play very nicely. The jack will not, you know, get in the way because, you know, ma on many of the guitars, it's pointing straight down. I don't like that. I think on the side is a bit better. You can play very easily while standing and while sitting on a couch or somewhere else. So that's why I chose this location right here. Now let me measure the jack. So we have to make a oh so oh wait 11.6. So we have to make a 12 millimeter hole. 
we just did that right so are you saying that if i want it i could put a jack right here oh my god isn't that hilarious imagine having a guitar like that <laughs> wait just look at this just imagine what it will be like a jack right underneath the pickup Would you rock this kind of a guitar? <laughs> well, I find this hilarious. Well, anyway, so yeah, the whole size is the same as we just drilled, so we'll follow exactly the same process. Okay, got it out of there. We have our jack hole. Well, it's not the time to put it in just yet. But let's check. Yep, that is perfect. I mean, I could even recess it a little bit, but you know, that's great. I like the way it turned out. So, with the holes drilled, I was thinking about what to do next for a while and actually visualizing the process on this to-do list and i came to the conclusion that now i really gotta finish up the neck like the rough shaping and all of course you know not taking fine sanding into consideration so that's why i would like to tackle this heel joint a little bit uh, i'll show you a quick time lapse of what i will be doing but essentially i'll be using several tools like rasps probably a drill bit again with the spindle center attachment this one they're really really nice for carving for quick carving you know very cheap as well so super nice tool so yeah i'll i'll do that and essentially what we're doing here is the same thing as a neck wallet in this shape exactly the same thing the same idea just on a bigger scale so yeah enjoy the time lapse Okay, here is a quick update. This is what I've got so far. Right here. So this is comfortable to play on the 24th fret. There is still some friction, but it's happening right here. And I will be working on this as well, just a bit later. So it's not 100% there, it's like 80% there, but I'm calling this good for now because at some point I will have to glue in the neck and actually the fit on the neck is very very nice you see and you know I'm holding it it's not going anywhere it's you know it's <laughs> I could leave it like that actually so I can even hold it so at this point I would like to remove the neck it goes out very easily as well put the body aside for now so we have this kind of joint happening here right but here it's still a bit rough so i would like to very quickly smooth it out and make it in line with the rest of the neck very very quick have to be very careful not to go over this line but even if i go a little bit not an issue because that's entirely fixable yep anyway let me finish this up so here, before we go into the time-lapse mode, I would like to very quickly emphasize the two tricks that I'm using here to make sure that the neck is consistent. Uh, first thing, well, I masked off the, the area that I don't want to touch. Uh, masking tape is, you know, a bit of a harder of a line than just a pencil and it's very easy to, you know, I don't know, remove the pencil line somehow and not see it at all. And on masking tape, you will see exactly 
you know, if you damage it a little bit. Here is the line. It's a hard line. We don't want to go over it. Here, you see I have stripes all over the neck. And this is to ensure the consistency of the neck. In the perfect world, I would want a slightly bigger, uh, what do you call that? Like a straight, oh, leveling beam, yes, leveling beam. Slightly bigger leveling beam. I have a huge one that is too big. <laughs> I have this small one that is probably too small for this job. But, you know, this is what I have. And these lines will help me ensure that, you know, the neck is consistent all the way. Obviously, the straight post portion you know ends about here and here we have a gradual climb so this is what we are working on right now now yeah i guess you know not much explanation here just you know go over the neck you know and if the lines are removed then it's consistent or you know rather consistent so let's just do it And with the neck consistent across whole length, except for these volutes, of course. Now we can move on to this part. So here I'm going to use exactly the same technique. Uh, I have the pencil lines across, across the whole fretwork here. I have my fret guru, fret leveling beam, an awesome thing, rather costly, but it's one of the best tools I have. And now what we are going to do is just go over the whole fretboard, you know, without actually a lot of pressure at all. So just go over the fretboard very lightly. It should be rather straight because I did this before. And we are going to ensure that the fretboard is very straight and very consistent as well. step complete and our fretboard extremely straight I would like to very quickly polish it uh, with a radius block and some sandpaper on it the radius on this fretboard is 16 inches and it was three radius but you know just once again to like ensure the consistency I'll just go over and then again the idea here is that I'm mostly polishing it and preparing it for the fret installation because you know there is not much else to do with the neck you know it obviously has to be sanded down it's still in kind of a rough finish uh, 80 grit or 120 grit sandpaper areas like this obviously you know a lot of touch-ups here and there but I would like to finish with the fretboard first And so while doing all that, making the neck straight and smooth, you know, I thought to myself, why don't I sand it down? Because essentially what I'm doing now is preparing for the installation of the frets. And you know, the more work I do to it now, the less work I will have to do later. So yeah, I decided to basically take uh, or an orbital sander and sand it down. So that's what I will do now. That's not very fun to watch, but I thought that I should let you know. <laughs> 